Hey, Goose. Yeah. What you doing? We got a show to do. Hey, welcome to our show, guys. Uh, another episode in 09. We got a dandy show here for you today. And I'm looking here in the dictionary, Bryce. Okay. And I'm looking up the word tanning. Tanning? We go into a tanning salon today, Goose? Are you gonna work on your farmer's tan? No, Bryce, not oh. that kind of tanning. Oh. This is the dictionary's uh, definition of tanning. The converting of hide or skins into leather. Oh. So that's the kind of tanning we're gonna do today, and we're gonna bring in our guest right here now. All we're right. gonna bring in Jerry Ross. How you doing? Welcome to our show, man. Okay. Now, I wanted to be in uh, dress here. I got my coonskin cap. Wow, that's a nice one, isn't it, Jerry? He's covering up his ball is what he's doing. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Using that, well, it's not really an animal's hide, though. That's just some material, it looks like. So how can you tell imitation well, from real fur? I'll show you a real coon. It's just, you can see the difference in, in quality. Well, see this. The tail looks the same. Okay. Yet it's still not real. And it's too even colored where this changes colors. Oh. Oh. This is just a small one. This should take a bigger one than that to make a, uh, a cap like that. So a bigger coon to yes, make a bigger yes, cap. It's just a small one. So you're saying I got a big head? No, not necessarily. <laughs> it just takes more than a small one to make it. Okay, to make an adult size. Yes, uh, I got you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you told me we need we need to bring the boss in right now. Yes, we got well, the let's boss bring here. the boss in here. And the boss is who? This is my wife, Marilyn. How you doing? Welcome to our show. <laughs> we appreciate you. She's the one that keeps things going around here. I I pay the checks and oh. do the payroll. Oh, yet. that's what my wife does for <laughs> Nebo School District. She pays the bills for Nebo too, Bryce. And she pays me to keep you out of her hair. Is that the deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a real interesting topic, I thought, and we're gonna find out how interesting it is. So we're gonna go to the first step in tanning. Okay. And what we do to a fur, if I was to bring a, a raccoon in today, to you guys, what's the first thing we do? Okay, most of the stuff comes in and it's all salt dry. This stuff here is, for example, is uh, African skins. It'll say on there what they are. But that, it comes in all prepared like this. All the lips are turned on them, the ears are turned, and they're all fleshed off and they're dried out. We get them in like this. And in the first process, we put them in some of these drums. This is the one we do tanning in, but the drums back here, back here, Bryce. These are the main drums, and they're, uh, they've got hides that was re rehydrating today. They're in pickle now. But both these are on timers, and then we'll, we run them so much time for whatever process we're running them in. Okay. But we run roughly 100 gallon of water in here, and we'll have anywhere from all oh, 20 to 30 deer capes, or uh, 15 to 18 elk capes, or you know, depending on the size, that's how much stuff we run at once. Okay. Now tell our viewers what a cape is. A cape is the uh, front half of the animal that oh. is going to be mounted, and. Uh, on a, on a mannequin, like we'll show you in a minute, on, hanging on the wall. Gotcha. That uh, these things are run anywhere from about four to oh eight hours, depending on what hides we put in here. Then we we uh, drain them out and we wash everything, and then they go back in, and we'll put about a hundred gallon of pickle back in. Pickle. And oh, we're gonna show you the thing <laughs> about pickle here in a minute. And the pickle uh, consists of one ounce of of acid and one pound of salt per every gallon of water. And then after the hides are pickled, you know, completely all the way through, then we'll usually pull them out and throw them. These are ready to be shaped. Here. Look at this, Bryce. But th these are all in pickle right now, and they'll, they could stay in there for a year if you wanted. And for a year? Yeah, if, you know, we don't leave them that long, but they will stay in there that long. So all the bacteria has been killed in them, the hair has been set on them, and uh, so basically they're preserved at that point right there. Now you wouldn't want to drink that water. No. It's, it'll, it, when it's fresh and new, you can stick your hands in it, and you can, if you got a cut or something, it'll burn you, but it's not that strong, because so we got our hands in and out of it all day long. Gotcha. Step number two is what? Step number two is the shaving part of them. Shaving. And we got one of the best shavers, I've trained him myself basically thinning them, 
thicker hides have to be thin. Some of the thin hides, all you have to do is just shave the membrane off. And here's one of my shavers here. He's, he's about as get, good as you can get because I trained him myself. And his name's Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor. So we're going to go meet Mark Taylor right now, Bryce. Sounds good. And he'll show you how you just get right in there and shave the hides. Welcome to our show. I notice you've got a kind of a rough glove on. Yes. Oh, you got two gloves. What's the yes. deal? That, these are Kevlar gloves uh, made of stainless uh, steel fibers. And it's the blade's so sharp. You know, if you ever bump it, you don't want to cut yourself. Oh, so wow. Yes. It's just there for Take my protection. word for it. It's sharp. This is just the hide that's just come fresh out of the pickle. Um, you can see how dirty it is. Yeah. And you just want to be careful, don't want to cut any holes in it. Try to keep it nice and even and thin it down as good as you can, like Jerry was saying. Okay, now you mentioned holes. Yes. What happens if a hide comes in and it's got a bullet hole in it? Now, if it has a bullet hole in it, you might take, for instance, this hole here. Right there. You, you just want to be careful and just work around it. You don't want to make the hole any bigger than what it already is and kind of thin down around it as much as you can because the taxidermist will actually cut that and stitch it up so it's ask. nice and clean That's what I was gonna ask next, right? for, for the customer. So. Now, do you ever get cut on this blade? Yes, not too often, but at first I got cut quite a bit. After each day when we fill, shave uh, a batch of hides and we take them over and put them in these barrels over here, and then they're put back in the pickle for about a 24 hour period. Then we pull them out the next morning and uh, then we'll, we'll neutralize them and that's just putting them in soda water just for a little while, just to get the acid, start killing the acid in them. Then after they've uh, done that, then we put them in, in the other little drum over here. And, and like I say, we'll, we're mixing chemicals in the, all the tanning. And it's just recipes that we've come up with that we figure does the best job for the, uh, the type of hide. Some days we'll run nothing but elk capes, deer capes. Uh, some days we run just cats, coyotes, fox and stuff. And everything, we use a different tan on it because everything requires a different tan. Got you. What are we looking for in a good employee? Somebody that shows up on time, uh, can be trained right, and is interested. They've got to be interested, motivated to, to do this. Or they're not, they can be here a year and they still, they still can't do a good job if they're not motivated to do a, a good quality job. Beautiful. You know what I tell them? What's I, that? If they're not motivated, you know what I threaten them with? What's that? I tell them I'm going to tan and your hide. Oh, I like that. Yeah. See, Bryce is always good at that. Yeah. I tell them that. Okay. We've, we've had some groups of kids in here, and some of them are really nice, good kids. Some of them you'd like to tan their hide. Okay. <laughs> Ouch. Jerry and I was just here talking about the steps. The first step was what again? Rehydrate. Rehydrate. And then the pickling. Yes. Pickling? <laughs> Bryce! Pickling? Oh! A lot of people have told me that your brain must be pickled. All right. And I said, no, the guy's never had alcohol. In Look at this, baby. That's how it's been happening. You eat too many pickles, Goose. That kind of pickle, Jer? Well, that's a different type of pickle. Oh, okay. That's edible. We don't eat ours. Okay. <laughs> and then the second step? Second step is... Uh, the shaven part, which we have shown Mark shaven. We just came from Mark shaven. Then we put him back in for twenty in the pickle for twenty four hours. Then uh, every morning we we mix the, the chemical up, and then they'll run in pan, and they'll run roughly about an eight hour cycle in the pan. We pull stuff out, we rinse it, then it goes in the extractor over here. Got you. That gets the water out. It throws all the water out of them, dries them out good. That's on the spin cycle. That's right. Right. Just like doing your laundry, huh? And, and then, then put them back here and let them try to dry out for, uh, well, they'll dry ever since first thing this morning. Then Mindy, wherever Mindy's at. Okay, we're going to go find Mindy. There's Mindy there. She, she's the oiler. She comes in every day about noon and uh, take, take that hide over and show Welcome to our show. This is your daughter, right? Uh-huh. 
Okay. And he's worked with me a lot of years. A lot of years. So, Bry, you take the hide over on the table. Over on the table. You spread it out. What kind of height is that, Goose? Well, let's see. What is it, Mindy? It's an elk. Oh, an elk. That's the case. That's just the front half of the animal. The that's, front half? That's going to be mounted with the horns and everything. I got gotcha. you. Kind of like that one over there, Bry? Yes. That deer is mounted on the wall. Right there. So this is what's going to happen to this owl. Yes. Uh -huh. All right, Mindy. So now you're going to oil the hide. And why do we do that? So that it puts the oil back in the skin. Is so that kind of like after you've taken a bath, you put some lotion on? Pretty, pretty close. OK. Gotcha. And then these hides, that she oils them, and then they're, uh, they'll be put back in to dry. And the dried stuff will go until they're then they're completely dry, until about 90% dry. OK, I want to go in the other room. Okay. Once she gets this oiled, then she'll take it back in here. You won't believe this room, guys. You won't believe the pelts that's in here. Now this is what came out of tan this morning. So she's she's going to oil all this. She'll put it back on the rack. And this this room we we try to hold. You know, in uh, in the morning we'll we we like a fire in here because it uh, you know is a different it's a dry heat. Right here. Look under my tail. <laughs> What in the world do you got that hat on sideways for? It's getting in the way of my shot. Well, the junior high kids now, this is uh, being a bad, this is being bad. Don't you know, wear, wear the sideways. hat sideways. Looking cool. Looking cool. I can only imagine what would happen if a junior high kid actually went into school looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, there's a hat coat. The oh. hat would have to come off. My idea is better with it on. Put oh, it is it? Please, okay. Please put it back. Thank you. Too all much right. light in here with it off. All right. Where's Mindy? <laughs> Mindy knew what was good for her. She got away. Okay, Jerry. Yeah. Let's yeah. go over here and the explain. First, the viewers. first drum is the drum that you drum about. Uh, this is solid, so it holds the sawdust in. We had three different types of sawdust we use, depending on what height we're, we're drumming out. And this is basically just comes out of a cabinet shop, and this huh. one we'll do deer capes, nail capes, stuff in. This is just a powder. It's just like just like flour. Wow. That stuff is for buffalo, anything with real fine hair. And then this is this is a little bit coarser. It's what they call wood flour. That's just wood a little flour. bit. And sometimes we'll, we mix these two together, and then it, it goes in this drum, and they'll drum they'll 20, 20, 30 minutes in on a wet pan high. And when they come out, they're just all covered in sawdust, and, and they look dirty. Then we throw them in the shaker. The shaker. And the shaker. It shakes all the, the dust back out of them. Each one of these drums will run about 15, 16 RPMs, and uh, they'll turn up. I know Jerry's got a funny story, and Bryce likes funny stories. Can you give us a funny story about the well, drum? The funnest I've had with kids when they come in here, that the lid's on, they can't see inside, uh -huh. it's turning, and they want to know what's in that, why it's turning. I've always told them that there's squirrels in there. And that's what makes it run, and they, they want to see them. And I said, I can't open it up because they'll run away. And I open it up once in a while, just, just long enough to throw some more grain in there, or nuts or whatever, to feed them, to keep that thing turning. I got gotcha. you. People don't bring in squirrel hides, do they? Uh, I've done a few, yes. I mean, they're cute little animals. No, I've done just about everything you can imagine. Okay. I've now, even done house cats. Oh, have I've you? I've never done a dog yet, but I have done house cats. I got a shipment out of California that I did. Wow. I've done horses, people's horses. We've done uh, elephants. We've done zebras, uh, giraffes. Oh, and, did you do Bright, uh, Blair Hamilton's yeah, giraffe? Yes, we did. Oh, we did that show. How about that? How Small about world, that? Man. Small world. One of my customers out of Richfield, he's the one that did the mounting on it. And so he's, and Blair keeps pretty busy. He keeps a lot of stuff coming in here for us. And so what about good. to the animal activists, you know, that really love animals? Is this cruel? I don't think it's cruel because if, if you don't harvest the animals, Mother Nature does, and in, in the long run, 
Mother Nature's way of getting rid of them is worse because they usually die of a fever, starvation, or whatever. So if we don't keep the animals under control, then that's what happens to them. Beautiful answer. And, you know, people don't just uh, go out and shoot these animals just, just to, to be just, just to be yeah, killing, just to be killing, and just to take the hides. They're utilizing the meat and beautiful and everything else. Even just like the mountain lion and stuff. People even eat those. Oh, do they eat yes. lion? I we would. got a mountain lion. Which one's the lion, Jared? Yeah, on the very end there. No, there's two of them there. Oh, they're pretty. They're still wet. Oh they're wow. They're wet, so they don't look really up to par. So, where did Mindy go? You keep looking for she, Mindy, but you never actually bring her on. Well, what I'm thinking is, these are pretty heavy hides, and she's Mindy. not the biggest uh, gal in town, right? No, but she'd probably whip you if she wanted. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. So now, here's another show. So how do you <laughs> lug these heavy, wet hides? I just do. So it's back to that work ethic again. Yeah. Mom and Dad. Mm -hmm. Nothing lazy about you. No. Okay, what's your what's your favorite thing about working in a hide shop? The smell. The smell? <laughs> now that's interesting because you're probably thinking it stinks over here. Bryce, does it smell? It smells like musk. The musk. I made that up. I don't know. It's about what my clothes smell like after yeah. I've got out of the shower and go smell my That's clothes. right. So it smells pretty darn good in here. I'm thinking you might go home, Goose, and get a kiss just because you smell good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now just over your left shoulder, we got some fox here. Yeah. They, oh, they're, wow. they're basically dried, and uh, they've been oiled and everything, and we just finished drying them out. These will probably go in the drum tonight. Yeah, we run most of the drums in the evening. Yeah, these drums in here, so we don't have to listen to them. And so they're on timers, and they'll run for so many hours, and then turn off by themselves. Every animal's not mounted, right? No. Do some people uh, throw them down as a rug? Yeah, the, the beef hide, some of the buffalo hides are just thrown out, you know, just as just for looks. They'll throw them over their couches. And a lot of these that have got feet and stuff on them, these are what we call wall hangers. Wall hangers? And they'll just have, put them in their house somewhere just for show. Oh. Once they've been tanned, then they're, they're all preserved so the bugs or nothing will ever get in them. And, and they're all clean and everything when we're done with them. So. Goose, what does that fox tail feel like? Boy, it's soft. Is it? It is. I was wondering. Now, your son Jeremy told me that uh, just about every piece of equipment in here you made by hand. Yeah. Uh, so drums, for example, you know, if you buy those, I probably bought or build them for, oh, probably a, a fourth of the cost. And yeah, most of the stuff is real expensive, so I built it myself. I built both these drums. I built the drums back there. I did have a guy that has a fiberglass shop. He built the tanks for me, and then I done all the fabrication of the frames. And, and then you have to figure out the gearing on it, how fast you want it to turn. So we got a smart dude here, Bryce. <laughs> I'd say. Smart dude. He's got uh, the whole business figured out. Yeah. Hey, now there's one machine in here I know you didn't build. What's that? It's that microwave. Oh, yes. What do you do with it? The microwave is what we heat the oil up here. Oh, heat the oil in. Oh, Mindy, no. What do you got there? You don't drink the oil. This isn't oil. This is hot chocolate. Oh, hot chocolate. <laughs> okay. Bryce, can you get a shot of the uh, Rocky Mountain Goat? Okay. It just come out of the pickle this morning? It's out of the pan. It oh. just dried out a little bit now so it can be finished. We'll brush it and then stack it and freeze it. Yeah. Oh, look at the hooves. Yeah. Wow. Now, usually people, especially the women, they're really concerned about money and the cost. Mm -hmm. What would you charge this individual to, to do what you need to do? The mountain goats uh, charge two, two and, a half. two and a half on those. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, that's just for the tanning, and then it goes to the taxidermist. I'm not sure what the taxidermist charge. Uh, this is a life size, so it'll be mounted. You know, it might be stand up on rocks, whatever. And I'm saying, geez, I don't know what to charge. I'd say from five to ten thousand dollars to mount it. Oh wow! So I'm, I'm, I know there's some women out there thinking, honey. We could spend our money better than that, can't we? What do you say to that? Well, if the guy enjoys it, 
Yeah, and they love hunting and stuff. I'd say let the wife go to the mall, let the guy head for the mouth. Oh, <laughs> the guy's going, yeah, baby, see? Yeah. All right. We're I'm, gonna, not, I'm not doing that. Oh, <laughs> damn I'm, it. I'm saying, no, don't let her go to the mall, baby, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, or it might cost you more than going hunting. You're right. right. What do you think of that, Marilyn? Yeah. More of them all? He never, I work, he has me working constantly, so I can't make it to the mall. Oh. I just have to do these hikes. Oh, so she, now this lesson here, guys, wow. She, yeah. She's got it figured out. She comes in here every day and bags the hikes and, and cleans them. The and she uh, brushes out the buffalo and cleans those. And this is just a small tape here compared to some. Some of them will fit on that whole tape. Now, what did we say that was over there, Goose? Well, it's a bison, and I call it a buffalo. Oh, yeah, buffalo, bison. Holy cow, we just had a show on that. Yes, we did with John Bowling Zane. Can we see, take a look at that a little closer, maybe? You this, bet. Let's do it. Is, this is an individual's because it's got a tag with the number, and we have it booked. So we know that that's not a taxidermist. That's the individual. And we take this. It hasn't been brushed, and we put it through that machine right there. Me and Mark get on the machine whenever we have them, and we, it brushes through them, and then we take these, and we go back over it, and we get it all out, redrum it, bring it back, rebrush it, and then we sack it up and put it in a freezer. And it, this is called a wet tan, so you never dry it. And that way, it goes right onto the form without having to soak it back up. All right, so my invitation coon cap, would it make it through that machine? No. I don't think so. I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would make it, baby. It would make it. I think we ought to try it. Let's do a demonstration. Hey. <laughs> hey, we're going to take our second break, right, Bryce? And then we'll come back, and you know how we close our show. We like to have a little fun closing the show. Fur. It's wonderful stuff. It helps me feel comfy. When the weather is rough. Before you run off the pickles, I want to check the pH on it and see just how uh, stout this stuff is. It's not that bad. It's four, still going down, 406. So that's two above what I pickle the hides in. Huh. Two points. So Goose is okay if he eats a couple. Yeah, of he's still good. <laughs> All right. All right, Jerry, I guess Goose wants to show us the other building, so. Uh... He's hiding. I think that'd be a good time to put his hat to the cleaner and see if we can clean her up a little oh, bit. How does I that, like that all idea. That, all that marking. There you go. Don't tell him we did this. See if we'll you see can clean, clean that up. Okay, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> He'd make me pay for it otherwise. Let's, let's go on a safari of our own here, see if we can find out where he went. Dermis will be the ones that skin them and then they saw them and dry them and bring them in. Okay. Um, so you work primarily with taxidermists then, don't you? Yes. Alright. And then we just. Now have... this building smells a little gamey to me. Yeah. This is. You guys smell that at home? Take a good whiff of the way it smells in here, will you? <laughs> You're used to the smell, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Well, you got a bunch of hides in here. And then in this, this other building over here is the finished product. All right, we're going to hope we see Goose over here. You got freezers in them. Oh, and, okay. And all what the goes hides. in the freezers? They're just the frozen. Just the frozen wet tan. Oh, okay. Mostly the capes. Right. Well, let's see. Where, I guess I was left. I thought he'd be over here. Just to make sure. Maybe he's in the other building. I sure as heck don't see him. <laughs> hey, Goose. Whoa. There he is. Whoa. Hey. I'm sorry. I'm looking for Goose Beardall. Hey, you know how we close our show. <laughs> hey, have a great day. It's a dandy out there today, isn't it, Mark? Nice day. Nice day. <laughs> and remember, we love you.
We truly do. We'll catch you on our next show. Yeah. He was hiding in the hides. <laughs>